So the next event is uh, the Battle of Utah Springs. And uh, Light Horse Harry uh, is there, of course, and, and Marion. Marion came in late because uh, just a few days before he had been at Parker's Ferry. And possibly the reason that uh, the British were short of cavalry at Utah Springs is because 125 of them were dead down Parker's Ferry. When he gets back and gets has word that that uh, uh, Green wants him to come around uh, and get to the north of Utah Springs, and Marion takes roughly 250 men on horseback around the British camp and is never uh, is uh, is never detected. And so at the Battle of uh, Utah Springs, there were three units of militia in the front line and. Green had tried that at uh, Guilford Courthouse. It hadn't worked. Um, of course, that's what Morgan did at Cowpens, and it did work. And, uh, and so Green tries it again. And uh, on the left of the line, you have Andrew Pickens, and in the middle, you have the uh, North Carolina militia under uh, Colonel Malmody. And on the right of the line, um, Tom uh, Francis Marion, and Marion is actually in command of the whole line, although they're the three units with different commanders. And to his right is, uh, on the flank, is Light Horse Harry Lee. So they're together again. And, uh, and of course, the battle uh, is extremely bloody and, uh, and brutal and uh, uh, starts in the woods. And uh, they, they push the British um, actually off the battlefield back into their headquarters. The British shot generally about five feet too high but the wind blew that day favorably for Marion's marksmen and they did great execution. They fired from 15 to 20 rounds each man. Both sides claimed the victory, but the fruits of one were with the Americans. The British had left 53 uh, seriously wounded British soldiers on the field and didn't bury their dead. It does not sound like a great victory to me. And then the accounts afterwards, uh, Otho Williams uh, writes, it's a great victory. Uh, uh, Governor Rutledge did, and uh, uh, Light Horse Harry uh, thought it was a victory, and uh, uh, James thought that, it, that uh, they were d denied a, a greater victory, but it, he doesn't think that it's a, uh, it's a failure. After the Battle of Utah Springs, Lee reports that most of the army was seriously ill, um, it was at the end of summer, and that summer from 96 to Utah Springs is known as the dog days of the 1781. And uh, Lee talks about the fact the whole army was sick. The only group that still could operate was Marion and his men. And he says that um, that was because they were used to the terrain and the, and the climate. But if you think about it, Marion never camped with the Continental Army, with the exception of the night before the Battle of Utah Springs. When Green went into to camp at the High Hills, Marion took his men to Candy's Plantation. And now, if you think about what we know about contagion, then maybe part of the reason that Marion's men stayed healthy was they kept pretty much apart from, uh, from these big encampments. There is a communique that Green sends to Marion at about the 19th of September, which would have been 11 days after the Battle of Utah Springs, uh, uh, complimenting him on, uh, on his, uh, uh, his action, uh, thanking him for calling the militia, asking him to uh, keep militia in the field in the event that the British tried to come out across the Santee River, and describing what was happening in in Virginia and hoping that that Cornwallis would not be able to retreat back through North Carolina. So it seems to me when you read Lee and you read the correspondence between Green and Marion and Governor Rutledge and Marion, they all considered Marion a major player. I mean, he wasn't just this little local hillbilly that, you know, doing doing a few raids that they considered, certainly Green considered him part of the overall uh, strategy. When I consider how much you have done and suffered, and under what disadvantage you have maintained your ground, I am at a loss which to admire most, your courage and fortitude, 
or your address and management. History affords no instance wherein an officer has kept possession of a country under so many disadvantages as you have, surrounded on every side by a superior force, hunted from every quarter by veteran troops. You have found means to elude all their attempts and to keep alive the hopes of an oppressed militia. Nathaniel Green, 1781.